Hello and welcome back, or welcome to your first lecture with me. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't matter. I think I've said it in all of the lectures now. If you've watched the others, you're like, he keeps saying the same thing over and over again. All right, no worries. But listen, in this lecture right here, we're going to talk about the organs of the chest and of the abdomen. We're going to go through sort of a basic, well, what are these things? Yeah, they're organs, um, and they're in your chest, and yeah, no. Okay, chest and abdomen, uh, abdominal organs, and, um, you know, if you want to know more about the heart, there's a lecture on the heart over there. Uh, but we're going to start there, because you know what? I like the heart. I don't know. I like the heart. Uh, the heart is probably my favorite organ. But there it is right there. There's the heart. Now, that lives in an area between those two things things there, those are the lungs, by the way, um, lives in the area between those two called the mediastinum or the mediastinum, depending on which way you like to pronounce it. Uh, uh, so it lives right there in the middle. So I want to put its heart back. It's a little easier to, uh, to, 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 to pump blood now, isn't it? Anyway, so uh, we're going to talk about the lungs. Look at that. Here's a lung right here. Now, you may say, wait, is that the left lung or is that the right lung? As I'm looking at it, it looks like the right-hand side, the left over here. No, 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 no. Always think left of the patient, right of the patient. So left-hand side of the patient, right side of the patient. Or you could also uh, just think mannequin, right? So left, if I'm standing in the mannequin's place, then this is my left and this is my right. Well, there you go. So this is actually the left lung. This is the left lung. Let's grab the right lung. Uh, right lung. Oh, no, not you, heart. See, the heart's always wanting to come back there. There you go. There's the right and the left lung. So the lungs are more or less a baffles system. All right. They bring air in and out. Now, they don't actually physically pull the air in. Okay. They're more or less just spongy material that the air goes in and the air goes out. The thing that is really responsible for mechanical ventilation is this right here. That is your diaphragm. That's the diaphragm. So the diaphragm expands and contracts and, and you know, relaxes and all that kind of good stuff. And as it does that, the lungs fill with oxygen. Now, you can test this out with, like, a plastic bottle. If you took a plastic bottle, cut the bottom off of it, put a, a balloon down in the top of the bottle, and then at the bottom of the bottle, another balloon, but covering over the bottom, and then pull down on that balloon that's at the bottom there, and you'll notice that the top balloon, that upper balloon uh, at the neck will inflate, okay? So there you go. So there's the lungs. I'm not putting them back correct because I want you to be able to see them. There's the diaphragm. Now, right up underneath the diaphragm is, uh, in the abdominal organs here, is the stomach. So you see the stomach right there. This is the esophagus all the way down into the stomach. And the stomach sits right up underneath the diaphragm. So you know, you know, after Thanksgiving, where you're feeling all, oh, yeah, I can't breathe. That's because your stomach is sort of pushing up against your diaphragm, and it's creating more pressure in there. It makes it uh, feel a little harder to breathe. You're still breathing okay, but it makes it feel that way. So right over here next to the stomach there is this green, gangly-looking thing right there. That is the gallbladder. That's the gallbladder. If you've ever heard people say they had gallstones, well, uh, that's where they are, and that's called cholecystitis or inflammation of the gallbladder, cholecystitis. All right, and uh, at the bottom of the, the the stomach here is this area called the duodenum or duodenum. I've heard people pronounce it either way. That's fine. I don't care which way you pronounce it, just as long as you remember it. And that actually empties into the small intestine. That's sort of part of the small intestine there. That empties here into the small intestine. Uh, most people go, oh, yeah, the, 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 the stomach. Yeah, 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 that's for digestion of food. Eh, not so much. The stomach is actually more for breakdown. Yes, there is a little bit of digestion happening in here, but the, the, the stomach is more for breakdown of those foods so that they can go through the small intestine here all the way through, and that's where digestion is really happening. Now, they empty out into the large intestine or the colon, 
And the main purpose of the large intestine of the colon is really to pull water back into the body from that leftover food, okay? Um, at that point, it's called it's called chyme, but that, that sort of leftover is there sort of to pull water back in. And you see this little thing right here down there at the bottom. That's the appendix, and you may go, oh, I know the appendix. Completely useless. You can take it out. It's not worth it. Well, wait a minute now. We've actually found out that the appendix does have some uses and some functions, and we'll talk about that more in that lymphatic system lecture, okay, which is going to be right over there. But there you go. So that's your, those are, those are some of those abdominal organs there. And you go, wait a minute, there's a couple left in there. Yes, there sure is. Look at that. There's one right there, the liver. The liver lives mostly in the right upper quadrant. So when we talk about quadrants, it would be right upper quadrant. Let's get the lungs out of the way here. Let's put those back. It's a lot easier to breathe that way, isn't it? Here, we can even put your diaphragm back, let's put your heart back. I mean, that's so much easier to breathe. And I, there I was all in the digestive system. Well, that was a little weird, wasn't it? But when we talk about uh, the quadrants, we talk about the right upper quadrant, which would be here, the left upper quadrant over here, the right lower quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. That is the liver. That lives mostly in the right upper quadrant, although piece of it comes over into the left upper quadrant. Now, there's a little guy right back here. What is this weird looking thing? Look at that. Man, what is that thing? That thing is crazy. It looks like a weird, funky earlobe or something like that. No, that is the pancreas. That's the pancreas right there. And Remember, we're going to talk more about all of these individual organs and what they do in the later lectures, but that right there, there it is, that is your pancreas, okay? We can put that pancreas back. There you go, much easier to function with that. And then back here in the retroperitoneal space, which is that area back behind the abdomen in that retroperitoneal space, right here, here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, the kidneys. There they are, the kidneys, the right kidney, the left kidney. And then you notice they look like they're wearing little Christmas hats or little elf hats. Well, those are the adrenal glands. Those are the adrenal glands. They sit right up on top of the kidney there. And then you'll see the ureters coming down here, and they empty into the bladder, which eventually makes its way into the toilet bowl. Okay? Well, there you go. That is the basic anatomy of the chest and of the abdomen. And some of you are going, hey, Wait a second, you're missing an organ in there, a pretty important one, like that organ right over there. Got to come back for the lymphatic system, and we'll talk more about that organ right over there, known as the spleen. Ah, that's a cool one. All right, well, listen, hey, thanks for coming. Hope you really enjoyed this lecture, and uh, there's many more, so check them all out. And re remember, anything can happen in virtual reality. Have a great one.